Now, let us consider melting point, melting point for oxides. Now, melting point for oxides, the trend is here. Again, this line will mark the melting point for sodium oxide, and I put it relatively high. That means involving a species where we consider them to have high melting point, I only compound dry molecule. Below this line will be for my simple molecule. So sodium oxide, I only compound. Melting point is generally high. Magnesium oxide, it will go up. Interestingly, for aluminum oxide, the melting point actually comes down, which is a bit unusual. If I consider sodium, magnesium, aluminum oxide, all these are ionic compounds. So if they're ionic compound, then the factors affecting melting point should be lattice energy, Q plus, Q minus over R plus plus R minus. And if I compare any plus, Mg2 plus, Al3 plus, there's a gradual change in the trend in my Q plus. Q plus actually goes up from any plus, Mg2 plus to Al3 plus. So by right, according to this lattice energy concept, the magnitude for the lattice energy should increase and strength of ionic bond should go up from sodium oxide to magnesium oxide to aluminum oxide. We will expect the melting point to increase all the way, but interestingly, Al2O3, the melting point starts to come down. So melting point for magnesium oxide in this set happens to be the highest. Al2O3 comes down, and there's an anomaly in terms of the melting point for this ionic compound. Later, we will use this ionic bond with significant covalent character to try to explain that. We settle the rest of the species first because these few guys are a little bit more straightforward. Silicon dioxide melting point is high, but it just so happens that it is slightly below aluminum oxide, but above sodium oxide. Again, we don't need to explain why. How come this melting point for giant molecule uh, is lower than aluminum oxide or higher than sodium oxide? Remember earlier we mentioned we don't compare melting point between ionic compound, giant molecule, and metals. We don't need to worry about it. For this set, is, since this is in syllabus, we just memorize it. So silicon dioxide melting point is above sodium oxide, but below aluminum oxide. And we don't need to explain, we just need to remember that. Then if I consider P4O10SO3, P4O10SO3, simple molecule, and the factors affecting melting point for these two guys will be electron clock size. And P4O10 clearly is larger, significantly bigger than SO3. You have a bigger electron clock, more polarizable, and therefore the melting point will be higher. Uh, stronger IDID, melting point is higher for P4O10 versus SO3. Of course, we know that what is interesting is the melting point involving my ionic compound. How come there is an anomaly involving the melting point for aluminum oxide? And how do I make use of this ionic bond with a significant covalent character to try to explain that? Now, when do we learn this uh, ionic bond with significant covalent character? Again, we cover this under chem bonding. Chem bonding, there was this pretty elaborate discussion involving uh, if I have a compound, there are all these different types of interaction, you know, I have a highly covalent bonds, highly ionic bond, ionic bond with covalent character, covalent bond with ionic character, all these in-betweens, you know. And when we did this in chem bonding, some of us might find this a bit confusing. It's very abstract and I don't really know what is the significance of that. So highly covalent bond is where there's little or no difference in electronegativity. So things like hydrogen-hydrogen bond, chlorine-chlorine bond, where there's no difference in electronegativity, or I can also consider CH bond, where the difference in electronegativity is very small. So covalent is sharing of electrons. So highly covalent means that the bond is effectively non-polar. So we are actually using this idea all the time, but we don't call it highly covalent. We call this non-polar bond. The bond is non-polar, CH bond, for example. Now, how about highly ionic bonds? Highly ionic bonds is the interaction is purely electrostatic, plus attract a minus, minus attract a plus. Then the interaction is considered as highly ionic. Covalent bond with ionic character is what we typically call polar bond. It is a covalent bond, but it's a delta plus, delta minus. There's a little bit of positive charge attracting a negative charge. So covalent bond with ionic character, uh, in terms of application, we just call this polar bonds. Actually, we're using it all the time. It's just that uh, we might not realize it. Huh? Your polar bond will be, your polar bonds will be our covalent bond with ionic character. Now, how about ionic bond with covalent character? And uh, we get to apply this here. Ionic bond with covalent character in Al2O3, we use it to explain how come the melting point for this guy is lower than the melting point for magnesium oxide. Now, it's because of this, you know, the charge density of your metal cation. And in my opinion, we need to have a very good understanding or appreciation involving this thing called the charge density and the polarizing power. So take note of it. We will get to apply this to quite a big extent. 
for periodicity as well as for the next topic. Now, the idea is for my metal cation, there's this factor or this property that comes in, we call this the charge density. Charge density is very easy to quantify, it's just charge divided by the radius. And if you have a high charge and you have a very small size, your charge density is very high. Charge density is high, we can see it as you have a very high charge in a very small region. So it's a very, very intense charge concentrated in a very, very small region. And so therefore, you have high polarizing power. Polarizing power is the ability for the metal cation to go and influence neighboring electron cloud, or it disturbs the electron cloud of neighboring species. You can think of this guy as an irritating person. He has a very strong ability to irritate or disturb neighboring people. And what is interesting involving this polarizing power is, regardless of the environment, if you have Al3+, if it is highly polarizing, you put this Al3+, which is highly polarizing in different environments, it has the same capacity, uh, same ability to go and disturb electron clock for different species. Later we will talk about this application-wise. So it's just like, again, uh, if we talk about the analogy of an irritating person. Irritating person, no matter where he goes, he has the innate ability to make people around him don't like him so much. And that's the, the nature of this type of people. So Al3 plus is the same, highly polarizing. So in the context, if I put it in oxides, what he can do is he can pull electron clock for O2 minus, and this highlighted region or the shader region here is what we call the distortion of electron cloud. Now, if there's a distortion of electron cloud, then we will say that it has significant covalent character or it starts to have covalent character. The bigger the distortion, the more significant the covalent character. How come this distortion means that there's covalent character? Two ways to look at it. One way is, I know that for ionic compound, the arrangement is each cation is surrounded by anion, each anion is surrounded by cations. Around this O2- uh, there are also other Al3 pluses hanging around. Around this Al3+, there will be other O2- minuses hanging around. Now, when there's a distortion of electron cloud, this distortion is only between this specific Al3+, and this O2-, minus, not with anybody else. So this distortion of electron cloud is only with this O2- minus and this Al3+, plus. the surrounding Al3+, pluses will not have the same distortion. And this means that this shader region is exclusively shared between Al3+, plus and this O2-, minus, this specific Al3+, plus and O2-. Minus. So this shader region, now you notice, since we say that it's only shared exclusively between these two guys, the sharing nature comes in, the covalent nature comes in, the covalent character comes in. But right, this is a proper explanation, but maybe we use a simpler way to explain. How come this distortion of electron cloud means there's covalent character? Another way to say this is, if you pull this enough, that means if you distort this enough, then eventually there will be an overlap of orbital between Al3 plus and O2 minus. If I can pull it so much until there's orbital overlap, and then once there's an orbital overlap, this is officially counted as a covalent bond. So the greater the pooling, eventually you just become a covalent bond. So the covalent nature comes in, the covalent character comes in. I think that way it's a little bit simplistic, and I think it's also easier for us to make use of it. So if I have a greater distortion of electron cloud, there will be significant covalent character, and this guy will start to exhibit properties of a simple molecule. And if I compare melting point for ionic compound, of course, we will reference it to lower melting point. So this is the reason why Al2O3 has a lower melting point than magnesium oxide. Again, if I come back to the trend, eh? if it obeys lattice energy, lattice energy is the default concept. This is my general trend. If it doesn't obey lattice energy, it doesn't, doesn't matter, right? We have a backup plan. My backup plan or my plan B is I talk about ionic bond with significant covalent character. We will just say that, oh, Al3+, plus, high charge density, high polarizing power, and therefore it can distort electron cloud for O2- minus to a significant extent. Al2O3 will have ionic bond with significant covalent character, so therefore the melting point is lower than expected. So we use ionic bond with covalent character to explain anomaly in melting point for ionic compounds. So this is one application. You keep in mind this high charge density, high polarizing power, and you treat this guy as an irritating person. Wherever he goes, he has the ability to irritate people that is around him. So later we will talk about it. Huh? Later it is Al3+, I'll throw him into different scenario. He has the same ability to go and disturb electron cloud for neighboring species. Wherever he goes, his polarizing power is the same uh, because it's his character. It is based on his charge density, and uh, charge density of that metal cation. So keep this in mind.